we now have some brief time for a question and answer, and I think I'll use my prerogative as moderator to ask a question of both of our panelists. Uh, for Dr. Keck, I want to know your, your thoughts on the recent 9-11 plotters, um, case at Guantanamo Bay. I guess last week in the Times, they announced that they were putting in a verdict. What do you think, um, how this will affect the transition between Bush and Obama and, and the public thoughts? And then for Mr. Uh, Dr. Whitney, I have a question about the Obama cons. Where do you think their future lies? Is it going to stay? Are they going to become reformed and, and go to the left, or are they going to become disenfranchised with their new, uh, their new relationship? Well, um, just very briefly, because I'd you know, like to hear from other people as well, but uh, you know, the, uh, uh, President Bush's assertions of executive authority in the context of the war on terror have, have sparked an, uh, an endless uh, um, series of legal conflicts, um, uh, and as I mentioned, including repeated rebukes from the Supreme Court. Um, many of these conflicts remain uh, significantly unresolved and are now going to be inherited by the Obama administration, and I think there are um, uh, no easy choices uh, for the Obama administration in figuring out what to do with these. Uh, just to sort of give one example, even if in the abstract uh, and, and sort of at the outset, if Barack Obama um, were highly critical of the president's decision uh, in the wake of 9-11 to unilaterally decide by executive order that uh, detained enemy combatants are going to be, detained non-citizen enemy combatants are going to be tried by specially created military tribunals that follow their own newly created set of rules, uh, uh, even if Obama were highly critical of that and wanted to say, um, uh, you know, why don't we do the same thing that we did uh, uh, with, uh, with the, the terrorists who tried to bomb the World Trade Center the first time around and try them in the civilian courts or, or whatever it was you might want to say, right, he doesn't have the opportunity to decide things from the outset at this point, right? There are ongoing trials in Guantanamo. Um, the, the chain of, uh, what, what, if one wanted to ship some of these people to civilian courts, um, it's virtually impossible at this point to obtain convictions because the chain of evidence has been so thoroughly corrupted. Um, uh, so either you stick with the existing system or you try to come up with some new hybrid system, right? And, and Obama's going to have a lot of tough decisions on these questions. Boy, Obama cons. I'm not sure what to say about Obama cons. I'm a historian, not a prophet. So it, it, every time I try to predict anything in the future, you know, it, it's too easy to be. Uh, made a fool of. Um, I, I would say that uh, I think the the disposition of the Obamacons was really more of a protest vote ultimately, and this is a time for the Republican Party, as I suggested when I interviewed that uh, person, just very, very softly hinted at when I uh, introduced Casey Pipes, that uh, the Republican Party has got to go through a whole lot of soul searching. Republicans are going to uh, have to look uh, at what part of their conservative roots do they keep, how pragmatic do they become. These are going to be um, the key questions within the party. I think um, there are some, some of the conservatives uh, with whom I've corresponded have said, hey, we wish that the Senate had been uh, taken over with a filibuster-proof Democratic majority. Go ahead and give them 60 seats. Let, let there be united Democratic liberal government, and then we'll really have a base to stage a comeback. And that's that's was sort of the uh, the defeatist attitude, was sort of a Schadenfreude directed against themselves in a sense, but with the idea that they would get back up and fight for a new day. But they wanted a lot of grist for their mill. They really wanted to see the Democrats get carried away by hubris, by uh, the power that they would have, and pass outrageous policies. That 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 was the conservatives' thinking with whom I spoke, and of course. Barack Obama is, all early indication show, proceeding very cautiously. Several panelists today have said they've been very encouraged by the tone that he has set. He's been very moderate. He refuses to get emotionally caught up in the issues or to personalize policy. And all of these are going to be great strengths for Obama as we move forward. So I, I think we're going to be in a period of reevaluation for number of months, maybe years, on where sort of the conservative liberal tension <coughs> lie. Uh, I think we're in a I think we're in a new order here. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I have a uh, I come from a scientific orientation. I come from a scientific orientation and I'm uh, like many people with that orientation have been mainly concerned with conserving the planet, uh, in other words global warming. 
and also conserving what uh, might be called the extension of the enlightenment and uh, of opposition to intelligent design and like that. And it seems to us, and I can speak for many other people who have expressed this to me, uh, that Bush uh, was anti-conservative uh, with regard to the planet and anti-intellectual uh, when it came to science. Uh, how would you respond to that? Well, that's an interesting question because a number of conservatives, I'm thinking now of the crunchy cons, uh, Rod Dreher, I'm thinking of the, the roots back with uh, Russell Kirk. A lot of people have said if you go back and just look etymologically, the roots conserve, conservation, conservatism, that actually the conservative agenda should be a conservation agenda from the get-go. And my understanding is that Bush was not anti-science as that so much as that he he insisted on what that the term of art that's used in uh, gubernatorial and presidential administrations, sound science. And he just, you know, it depends on, I guess, who you surround yourself with to determine what the sound science is. But I, I would be reluctant to say that he's anti-science per se. Uh, some of the issues, the, the stands that he took are clearly controversial and we can argue about them. Um, and we'll know, of course, uh, this is the first assessment of Bush presidency at the end of eight years. We will know better in coming months and years whether he did follow sound science or not. Yes, um, yes, the gentleman in the front. Yes, yes, sir. I've got actually got two questions. One for uh, Mr. Keck and one for yourself. I'll start with the larger question, but I'd like to pose a, a, a hypothesis and have your response to it. I have a feeling that what we think of as the conservative movement since 1994 has been kind of shrouded in fog. And I think that uh, the, the uh, Gingrich Revolution, if you will, pulled the conservatives so far to the right that it allowed the Clintons to move to the center where they were most comfortable and, uh, and really take the moderate conservatives' votes to their camp to a degree. I think the 2000 election, one might argue, uh, if in fact Gore did win the popular vote, then that was not a conservative victory, and the 2004 election was less a vote in favor of conservatism than it was a vote in support of, of what they perceived as a threat of Iraq and the war. And so uh, the 2006 election, of course, threw, the, threw, the, threw Congress back into the hands of the Democrats. So I'm not certain how strong that the real far-right conservative movement has been really since probably 96, 98, somewhere in there. And the circumstances may cause it to appear like there was a little bit stronger conservative movement than, than in reality there is. And I find it interesting to see after the election year, uh, the response, for example, at the governor's convention where they were trotting out the Republican governors uh, and speaking about how they were going to rebuild the conservative movement, it seemed like the same old neocons uh, saying, we, "Well, we just got to do it a little. We got to do it the same way, but a little bit differently." I'm not sure that's the response. I'd like to hear your thoughts.